Hey guys, Todd from Central Oregon Survival Network coming at you again today. Hey, today I want to talk to you guys about the four different elements for me that makes up a survival rifle or a bush rifle. You guys call it a truck gun or whatnot. But it's a rifle that I like to carry out into the wilderness and the woods that I can rely on. And I'm going to give you four different elements that I look at when I build that type of rifle. Now, throughout this video, if you guys have personal preferences of your own, uh, throw it down in the description box. I'd love to hear uh, what you guys have to say on it. So. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Now, these are the four elements that I look at when I build a survival rifle, bush gun, truck gun, or whatnot. And these are the things that I look at. So they might differ from the things that you might use or your personal preference. So if you have different ideas and things like that, please put it down in the description block. I'd love to hear it, start the conversation. I always like learning new things. So these are my four elements and what I look at. We're looking at uh, reliability, versatility, um, self-contained, and compact lightweight. Those are the four things I look at when I create a survival rifle, bush gun, things like that. I have a couple of them. Now what we're going to use today as a model is we're going to use the Savage Model 42. Now I know that uh, you know Stevens came out in 1938 with the Model 24 which is a I think superior gun to this one but uh, I wanted to get this this new version of the Model 42 and make it into to basically mine and I'm going to give you some pros and cons of the, also the Model 42 as we go along um, talking about those four different elements so let's just jump right into it so we're talking about reliability of course that makes sense right reliability you want something reliable out in the wilderness um, and we're looking at function and accuracy when you talk about reliability to me. Um, as far as the Model 42 is concerned, um, function, it's modeled after the Model 24, which is a really good uh, rifle. It's a, a really solid positive lock on your brake, your brake barrels. Um, the Model 42 comes in a 22 Magnum 410 or 22 Long Rifle 410. Back in the day, the Model 24 came out with quite a different quite a bit different uh, calibers. You had a big selection. Um, as they moved through the years, Savage started to take the model and mold it into, you know, 223 upper or 357 mag. There's a couple different ones out there, 3030. And the bottom barrel, you can get all the way up to 12 gauge. So they had a 410, 20 gauge, and a 12 gauge. And uh, maybe I'll look at more of those models for the future to adapt to one of these rifles that, that I like using or carrying out in the wilderness. Now, like I said, um, as far as reliability, I think this is a, a really, really good uh, rifle and pretty reliable. Now I'm going to show you a couple things again that I don't like about this rifle and it goes under reliability and also accuracy. Um, talking about the extractors, you can see here um, they've actually made a plastic extractor which is different than the Model 24. I do not like that at all. I wish they would have made that out of aluminum or something a little bit tougher as far as reliability goes. It still works good. Um, I've only used it for uh, some of the 410s that have expanded and I just basically extract that out of there. With the 22 mag, I just flick it out with my finger. Um, that's one thing I don't like about this rifle. It still works good. I just don't think as long as longevity goes that maybe that will end up failing on you somewhere in the future. Um, as far as, like I said, it's a brake barrel positive lock. I do like how they changed the actual release in front of the uh, trigger guard, as you can see here. I really like that on the actual Model 24, it was back on the buttstock. A lot of people do like that classic uh, release. Uh, I don't mind it either, but I do like where they added the release for this, for this model. Um, now, as far as accuracy. Um, one thing I did not like again about this Model 42, and this was me, it might not be on a model you get, it comes with plastic leaf, adjustable leaf sights in the rear. And I wanted to kind of keep it, you know, as the survival rifle, I wanted to keep it just with leaf sights, you know, that nothing really to fail, but I could not get it to come down. It was three inches from center high at 25 yards, and I could not get it to come down those three inches. I shaved it, I did everything I could to it, put it back on, and I could not get it to work. So I had to bite the bullet and I went with an optic and the weaver mount. I'll put all those descriptions down in the below in the description block if you guys are interested in uh, purchasing that for yourself. Now, I also made it, as you know, um, you know, with the 410, you don't want to, really don't want to scope on it unless you may be shooting a rifled slug or something. So I've got the quick releases, which will also be down in the description block. These are, I think, UTGs. Um, they actually work really well. As you can see here, 
I really wanted to make sure of the accuracy, so I pulled it off uh, four times, put it back on, pulled it off, put it back on, and it stayed consecutively within about a two inch groove at 25 yards. Uh, I'm really happy with that. I didn't at first, like I said, like it because I wanted to kind of keep it stock. I wanted to keep the, the leaf sight, but I went to the optic, which actually really is nice with the 22 Magnum. Um, you can get out there 25 yards pretty accurately. And again, when you pull this off, if you can see here with the 410, it gives you a, an excellent sight picture for firing your 410 rounds. So, you know, you take your scope off, put your 410 rounds, bird shot, whatnot, and that actually works out really well for accuracy. So back to reliability. Um, also on this trigger set, I really like that. That's actually off the Model 24. You can actually flip it for your 410 or flip it for your 22 Magnum. Now this does have a bolt or a um, trigger block safety. Uh, the old Model 24s didn't have that. You didn't need it because you know basically you cock it and uncock it for being safe so you can't fire it with it being uncocked well i kind of like the safety in a way so if i am doing some sort of of hunting maybe bird hunting you can actually have it cocked have the safety on when you're ready to fire click that safety off and then shoot so you can actually have it preset but it's here nor there um, you can use the hammer or not use the hammer so i do like the way that the hammer's designed and actually how this this model feels so that kind of covers reliability in the sense that it is built off of Model 24, which is really a reliable rifle, and I think a superior rifle to this one. But again, I wanted to pick this one up. And this is, as you can see here in the picture, it is the, uh, I guess, kind of a tactical version with your synthetic uh, stock and synthetic forefront. So um, let's move on to versatility. I don't want to make this video too long, but I do want to cover the elements and kind of get into detail on those. Versatility, like I said, it's a 22 mag 410. I really like having the 22 mag over the 22 long. Gives you a little bit more penetration, speed, power. Um, you know, I know a lot of people in the old days used to take down deer with the 22 mag. You're not allowed to legally uh, in this state, but uh, if you had to in an emergency, of course, that 22 mag will work out great. Small, small game, things like that. I've shot a lot of uh, rabbits. I've also shot, you know, birds with 22 mag. It's pretty dang accurate. I really like the 22 mag. Uh, the 410 gives you that versatility. Again, um, you know, you've got slugs, you've got double op buck, and you also got bird shot. Um, you know, a couple other varieties out there, but those are kind of your main ones, and that gives you that versatility as being, you know, a survival rifle bush gun. So. I really like that versatility and you go into ammo ca uh, capacity and weight so i can carry a lot of 410 i can carry a lot of 22 mag compared to a 12 gauge and a 30 30. yeah i can carry a lot of rounds that way but um you know this this these rounds don't weigh that much compared to those so that's kind of what i look at also when i'm building the survivor rifle oh yes i do have a 12 gauge one here that you can see um, it's a little bit heavier than this, and when you put the 22 mag insert in it, it makes it even heavier. That insert, it weighs quite a bit. So I wanted to cut down on weight, and I moved to this model a little more versatile. Um, removable sights, it's kind of versatile too. As I said, you can take this off. You can just use the uh, weaver mount to aim with. Um, you can also aim the 22 mag that way. It actually works out pretty dang good. I, only sh I shot it with that just in case if you did break your optic. You could actually use that weaver mount as as your your back rear uh, sight, and once you get used to where it's hitting, um, you know, within 15 yards, 10, 15 yards, it's it's good to go. So that's kind of cool uh, having that versatility there. Um, now moving into um, self-contained. Now that's kind of important to me on a lot of my uh, different survival rifles. Is it's very important to be self-contained. So what I did is I added uh, this rear bag. You can see in these photos and a video that I added this bag it has 16 410 rounds and 25 22 mag rounds so that's a good capacity of ammo that I can carry on this rifle it's attached to it I basically throw this in my rig and I have that much ammo on it I don't have to worry about throwing it in other boxes or filling my pockets for full of shells so I really like that as far as going into self-contained, I have the ammo on the rifle so I can just grab the rifle and I can go. Um, I also like the 410 too, because it does pack a punch. If say you did, were getting attacked by a mountain lion, things like that, does very rare, rarely happens. But if you needed to, having some self-defense ammo on here, which I do, I have uh, several slugs, some double-op buck, and then more birdshot on this rifle. So 
I really like that that option on here being self-contained. Now, also, this has a hollow buttstock. Um, in the buttstock, I put key items. I'm not going to build this crazy uh, survival ad fishing hooks fishing line, which you could. But my main concern is getting stuck maybe overnight. You know, I'm out there doing search and rescue, different things like that, and I get stuck overnight. So my biggest thing is actually having fire. I love fire. Of course, you guys know so many things, so many elements around fire. So I have fire starter in here, as you can see. I also have uh, a gun cleaning kit. I have oil. I have a knife. Um, it's a good additive and around the knife I actually made the sheath that's the Gorilla duct tape So I have actual duct tape too. It's kind of a multi-use multi-purpose which comes out really nice And that that is the part of the self-contained being multi-purpose or multi-functional So I really like that element. It does make the rifle a little bit heavier um, You know, I added the so I added the rifle sling so it, you know, it's easier to carry um, You can also do a tactical kind of sling when you shoot it um, works really well and it's and like I said, it's an accurate rifle. I really like shooting it So moving on to the last element um, Being compact and lightweight like I said, I, I did add some weight to it But even adding that weight to it with all the extra multi-use function um, It doesn't really even add up to the 12 gauge that I had with the 22 mag uh, Insert it just didn't make sense. It was just too heavy bulky 12 gauge ammo is bulky um, so being lightweight, this is still lightweight to me. And as far as compact, this model isn't necessarily compact. Yeah, it's it's smaller, it's not a huge rifle, so I kind of consider that compact. But they do sell a takedown of this model, which I wish I, I would have got, but um, I got this used uh, from a, a friend of mine. So uh, they actually have a takedown, and you have a, a compressed button here. It pushes up your forearm, and then you basically break it and you can Put it in two pieces and you have it in half it actually comes with a bag um, and it's really really compact i wish i would have got that model still might in the future um, i really like this one i'll just you know i it doesn't really take up that much room but if you did want something more compact that you can throw in a backpack i suggest you get the takedown model again this is the savage model 42 uh, 22 mag 410 and also comes like i said in the 22 long rifle okay just to kind of recap you know, you've got reliability, which is your function and accuracy. You got versatility, which goes into, you know, the different elements of the rifle. It's a 22 mag, 410, the different types of ammo you can get to it. Uh, maybe your optics, sights, you know, just different versatility to that, to that rifle. And then you got self-contained, which is really important to me. Um, having all that, that uh, ammo and a little kit in there just in case if this is all I had. Um, and I didn't have my survival pack, which is pretty rare, but if it is, this is all I had, then I know that I can light a fire, I can make it a night, that's, that's pretty easily done. Okay, compact, lightweight. So, um, this is lightweight, really, even if they added uh, gear, you know, and stuff in, into the uh, buttstock. But, uh, as far as compact, you, I suggest if you want something uh, really compact, to get, again, the uh, takedown model and you can put it into two pieces. All right guys, so that's basically my four elements that make up a survival rifle for me. I'd love to hear from you guys what you guys think, so go ahead and put that down in the description block. Also, like I said, I'll put the link to uh, the buttstock bag, couple elements maybe in the stock, and the link to uh, the weaver mount, the optics, and the quick release, because they actually work really well. So. Uh, I thank you guys for all your support, everything you guys do for me. I really appreciate it, and thank you for watching. If you like the video, subscribe, uh, like, share, and uh, I just really appreciate all your guys' time.